The aim is to try to re-express a function into an infinite polynomial. And I'm talking specifically about polynomial. That is why I'm working on x to the power of 0, x to the power of 1, x to the power of 2, all the way until infinity. It is an infinite polynomial. Which means that our aim, if I want to re-express a function into an infinite polynomial, will be to solve for a0, a1, a2, a3, a4, all the way. That means my aim is just to find the coefficients. You understand what I'm trying to say? Because, I, I, I mean, the polynomial is going to be in terms of x. So I don't need to go and try to find x. I just need to know what the coefficients represent. And we can use common sense. That's a good thing that we have been trying to do. You know, We can use common sense. We can use a bit of our, our logical thinking, right? to find ways to work out A0, A1, A2, all the way, you know, the stuff we, together with some of you, last year when we were doing McLaurin's, in fact, I didn't even present to you the formula. You know, I was asking, I remember I was asking you guys, right, can you help me, you know, to see how, if I were to tell you that this is my aim, how do you think you can find A0? Then uh, I think, Brian, you were, you were the first one who told me, right, you know, what, how do I find A0? I just simply let x be equal to 0. Because if I were to let x be equal to 0, looking at the form that I have on the right-hand side, all these terms will become 0. So A0 will become F0. A0 can be found by you know, substituting 0 into the function that you are supposed to re-express. Which means that if I have gotten this, then this A0 here, right, I can just simply replace it by F0, which is a number. F0 is a number. For example, E, uh, fx is e to the power of x, so e to the power of 0 is 1. So I will substitute 1 inside here. How about finding x? To find x, I'm going to take this original equation. Maybe I'm going to leave it as a... Let me just leave it as a0 first, okay? So I'm going to take this equation and I will differentiate it once. Because when I differentiate it once, I know this x will disappear. So this will totally disappear. I'm going to be left with a1. And for the rest of the terms, you will still have x. And because it still have x, I can use the same idea. I can just replace all the x by 0 again, which means that on the left-hand side, I will have a f prime 0. e to the power of x, when I differentiate it again, it is going to be e to the power of x. So I can still sub 0 into e to the power of x. And on the right-hand side, because all these terms are going to become 0, then I will have a1 which means that this a1 here is going to be f prime 0. That's how I find the coefficient of the second term. To find the coefficient of the third term, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this, I'll differentiate it one more time, and then I'm going to let x be equal to 0, f prime prime 0. This is going to be 2a2 because the rest of the terms are going to possess x and they are all going to become 0 when x becomes 0, which means that from here, I can find a version for a2, and A2 is going to be f prime prime 0 divided by 2. Let me write down for this. This one, A1, is going to be f prime 0. I'm going to do the same thing for to find A3. To find A3, I'm going to take this, I'll differentiate it one more time. This term, A2, will disappear. I'm going to be left with an A3 term that is going to be independent of x. I repeat the process again by letting x be equal to 0. Then this is going to give me 3 times 2 a3, and the rest of the terms become 0, then this will immediately give me another way that I can, I mean, this will give me the numerical value of A3, and that can be found by f prime 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 0 divided by 3 times 2. Actually, I can do exactly the same thing, but I believe that without me going through the whole process one more time, you can probably visualize that A4, right, is going to be f4, 0, divided by 4 times 3 times 2. So <coughs> we have this, 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 this. This I deduce through pattern recognition. Next time in May, June, when we are talking about series and sequences again, you know, we really want to see what exactly is series and sequences teaching us because we are actually executing a little bit of that, you know, here. Series and sequences in general, okay, helps us to try to see pattern. It is not just through APGP summation. It is in general, right, trying to teach us if we can just write down a few examples for ourselves, then hopefully we can see a bit further by generating some kind of pattern by knowing what is going to be here, you know, the nth term. So if you were to look at this, 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 I do think that I can maybe consolidate the denominator of this tree at least because I know what is going to be a5, right? I mean, you can imagine what is A5. It is going to be, the denominator is going to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 because I'm differentiating A to the power of 5, then I'll have, when I differentiate 5 will be the coefficient, then 4 will be the coefficient, then 3 will be the coefficient. So I'm, I think I'm going to rewrite this instead of just writing it as this. And 
it's going to be so long, you know, if I were to just keep writing this. So I'm going to rewrite this as f prime prime 0 divided by 2 factorial because it's the same as this. I'm going to rewrite this as f prime prime 0 divided by 3 factorial because it is the same as this. This will be f 4 0 divided by factorial if this is this is I mean since this is how we can work out the coefficient then I know then I know this a0 here is going to be f0 then we know this a1 here a1 here is going to be f prime 0 a2 a2 is going to be f prime prime 0 divided by 2 factorial this is going to be f prime 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 0 divided by 3 factorial this is going to be this f 4 0 divided by 4 factorial and in fact I know what is f n 0 x to the power of n this is going to be this divided by n factorial n plus dot 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 it is an infinite polynomial but when it comes to the actual question I mean first of all